The US government just bailed out Silicon Valley Bank. And if you're a regular working American, this should make you very upset. Because according to CNN, the Biden administration on Sunday guaranteed that the customers of Silicon Valley Bank will have access to all of their money starting on Monday. And what that means is that the White House, the Federal Reserve, and the FDIC is guaranteeing over 150 billion in uninsured deposits from wealthy tech executives and tech companies that were sitting at Silicon Valley Bank. This is unprecedented, folks, because the FDIC federal insurance deposit limit is $250,000 per bank account. And that FDIC deposit limit was meant to protect regular working Americans in the case of bank runs. But now they're expanding that to say, well, no, it's not 250, it's unlimited in the case of Silicon Valley Bank because the government determined that they were a systemic risk factor that could cause contagion across the US banking system. And ultimately, you know, the government and Janet Yellen at the Treasury and Jerome Powell at the Fed, they might be right about that. As I said in my video on Friday, there is lots of systemic risk in the banking system right now. However, that that does not excuse the government giving all the depositors from Silicon Valley Bank, who are basically rich people and rich tech companies in California, a free pass. They should have taken a haircut. Whether it was 10% or 20%, they should have lost something. And the fact that they didn't means that once again, the US government is encouraging moral hazard and risk taking in the financial system with no repercussions. Now in two minutes, I'm gonna explain how this bailout is gonna affect you as the regular American, particularly in regards to the Fed printing money and into inflation inflation or potentially deflation. But first, I need to explain how this bailout works so you can understand it. Number one, the Federal Reserve is promising to print money to make sure that all the depositors of Silicon Valley Bank can take out all the money if they want to this week. They're gonna be allowed to do that because the Fed is gonna print as much money as it takes. But number two, in the process, the FDIC is basically selling off all of Silicon Valley Bank's assets. And as they sell off the assets from Silicon Valley Bank, the FDIC is gonna pay back the Federal Reserve whatever they had to print in order to cover withdrawals from Silicon Valley Bank. So net, net, the Fed might not actually be injecting too much money into the economy since the FDIC is gonna sell the assets from the bank and then pay the Fed back. And so in the short term, this might be crisis averted. We'll have to see what the markets do this week. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of them think that uh, the situation is solved and that we're not gonna see other issues in the, in the financial system going forward. But here's the problem, folks, is that Silicon Valley Bank was the canary in the coal mine on the US banking and financial system. And even though the Fed and the US government acted quickly to bail them out, I do not think this is going to necessarily prevent future bank runs. And that's because the root causes of this bank run are still not addressed. And the number one root cause is that the money supply is contracting in America right now. As I showed you in my video on Friday, it's contracted by 2% year over year, the M2 money stock, which is the first time that's happened in 100 years. And the only other times money supply has ever contracted, we've had a depression and huge runs on banks. And so, so long as the Fed keeps doing their quantitative tightening program, which they've been doing the last nine months, we are likely to continue to see the money supply contract. And what's crazy to me is that I've read all these articles this weekend about Silicon Valley Bank, and not a single article mentioned the money supply. Like that was amazing to me. All these articles focus squarely on the individual situation of Silicon Valley Bank and its exposure to tech, uh, tech companies and crypto, which of course is relevant, but you have to zoom out for the broader context, everyone. The reason that there was a bank run to begin with at Silicon Valley Bank was because a lot of these tech companies started running out of money. That's why there was a bank run to begin with. And I think as we see the money supply continue to contract, if it does, We'll see in the next couple of weeks and months. If it does, I suspect other entities and stakeholders in the economy will begin running out of money and taking their money out of banks. Now, number two, there's still another issue that hasn't been addressed, and that's the fact that the reserve requirement for banks in America is still 0%. Back in March 2020, when the pandemic hit, the Federal Reserve Board of Governors reduced the reserve requirement from 10% to 0%, which means that the Fed is not requiring commercial banks to hold cash reserves. Normally it's 
10%, they have to hold 10% cash reserves either on hand or at the Fed. There is no such requirement right now. And again, it's amazing to me how not a single article I read over the weekend mentioned this. So, so long as banks continue to not be required to hold cash reserves by the Fed, I suspect we're going to see other bank runs and issues in the banking system going forward. Now, we need to clarify something, everyone. There's a lot of confusion out there. I called this a bailout. Other people are saying this is not a bailout. For instance, Janet Yellen is saying that a bailout of Silicon Valley Bank itself was not under consideration. She says, let me be clear that during the financial crisis, there were investors and owners of large banks that were bailed out. And the reforms that have been put in place means we're not doing that again. But we are concerned about depositors and are focused on trying to meet their needs. And so what does that mean? Why is Janet Yellen saying this is not a bailout when very clearly the depositors got bailed out. Well, yes, the depositors got bailed out, but the people who own stock in Silicon Valley Bank, the shareholders, they are not getting bailed out, which is good. Uh, they took risk buying that stock and they're gonna lose all their money, as well as some unsecured credit holders as well, people who made loans that were unsecured to Silicon Valley Bank, they're likely to get wiped out. So some people, will be losing their money in full out of this, which is good. The US government is not socializing all of these losses. However, they're setting a very bad precedent for banks. They're saying that if you have money and you're looking to put in a bank, that you shouldn't really be concerned with the financial health of the bank. That don't worry, the federal government and the treasury and the FDIC, they'll bail you out as a depositor if your bank makes bad decisions. And it's an unprecedented situation. I mean, what is the point of the FDIC $250,000 insurance limit if it's not gonna be enforced? And let me just tell you what worries me about this, everyone. I think what should scare you a little bit if you're the regular working American is that we just saw the government work to bail out depositors in a wealthy tech bank in the Bay Area. But they did that without addressing the root causes of the bank run, which are in my opinion, a contracting money supply, as well as the lack of a reserve requirement. And that contracting money supply is a key tool that the Federal Reserve is using to fight inflation through their quantitative tightening program. So you guys see the issue here, right? The Fed is doing things that are at odds with each other. On one hand, they're trying to fight inflation. They're trying to hike interest rates. They're doing quantitative tightening. But now they're setting a precedent that anytime a bank in America has an issue, they're going to print money to fix it. And maybe printing money in the short term isn't a huge deal if the FDIC can sell off the bank assets and pay back the Fed. But if we have more bank runs and the recession gets worse and the crisis gets worse, there'll be a certain point in time where the FDIC is not going to be able to liquidate assets and get fair market value back, in which case the Fed will be printing money net net into the economy and or the US taxpayer is going to be asked to foot the bill. And this is the ultimate issue I see is that this is papering over a broader problem, a problem that the Fed has created in this financial system over the last 15 years by suppressing interest rates. Now rates are going up and the money supply is going down and predictably we're going to have problems in the financial system because of that and you know I for one I would not want to be Jerome Powell right now because he's going to have some very hard choices to make and I'm going to be watching him closely particularly everyone you should be watching the Fed balance sheet, the total assets held at the Fed, you can see they've been going down due to quantitative tightening over the last nine months, which is ultimately what has caused the money supply to contract. Where there would be problems is if we see these assets start to go up. Like if all of a sudden the Federal Reserve has to foot up $100 billion in printed money to cover uh, the assets of people withdrawing money from SVB, then this would start to go up and that would be the signal of more money printing and more inflation. So this is really the key graph to watch in coming weeks and coming months and I will be tracking that for you here on this channel so make sure to hit the subscribe button if you're not a subscriber if you want to keep tabs on what's going on with this financial crisis as well as what's going on in the housing market my next couple videos will be housing market related everyone so watch out for them